very important part and I'll present you with some examples as well to help you understand this concept. Yeah, so let's go ahead. So uh, this is the 12th lesson in this course. And so let's talk about the idea of integration, right? So what it means is that it is actually used to find the area under curve of a function. So let's say we denote a function y is equal to fx, right? So for every value of x, you will have some value of y plotted on x, y graph. And what you'll get is this simple function. Now, what you want to do is now actually find the area under this curve, right? So this means this whole area. And like if I further extend this function here, then this area as well. So this is one method to actually find the area as I mentioned here. So what you do is you actually draw rectangles like right this bar shaped figures. So you draw all these rectangles underneath this curve, right? And what you do is that you find out the area of this rectangles. It is very much easy to find the area of this rectangle, this, this, and then add it all up, right? But as you can see the area, the sum of area of all these rectangles will actually not give you the true value because like this portion is missed here, this portion is missed here, this portion is missed here and this portion is extra here, right? So this is not actually required, but it is still co coming up, right? But uh, improvement on this figure will be this figure. So if like uh, the delta X is actually the width of this rectangle, Right, so all the rectangles have the same width delta x. If you reduce this width further, so what is happening is you'll get this figure. Now, as you can see why we are calling it an improvement over this figure, because now if you were to find out the area of all these rectangles and then you sum this up, you'll see like the value, although not the true value, but it will be actually much closer to the correct value because now the error terms are very less. So these, these, these terms, they are very, very less, right? So you'll actually get them a very close value to the uh, correct answer, right? And as we have seen in case of differentiation as well, like uh, the when the limit approaches to zero, you get the actual thing. So here in case of integration as well, it is true. So your answer will approach the true value as your this width of the rectangle that is delta x big tends to zero. And of course, it tends to zero. We mean that the uh, delta x becomes dx, right? So an example like why integration is an important concept to study is let's say you have y equal to 2x this kind of function right so of course you can plot it on x y graph and what you'll get is this straight line right now if you want to find out the area under this graph now remember that we are not actually defining limits for x right uh, like from x to 0 or x to 5 right so we are not really saying that find the area under this graph for x equal to 2 to between x equal to 5 we are not really saying that so this area will of course be like a function of x right no uh, as soon as you extend this graph further the area will also increase because the values of x will increase right so in this case, like how do we then define the area or under this curve? And this is where the formulas for integration come into picture, right? So the first concept we'll study is indefinite integral formula. And of course, these formulas, their derivation is beyond our scope right now. So we'll just study the formula and we'll remember them so that we can apply them conveniently. So why we are calling it indefinite is because just like I mentioned here, this is a case of indefinite integral because we are not actually mentioning the limits for x like from where to where you want to integrate right so we just want like what is the area under this graph in terms of x and that is your indefinite integral this is called indefinite integral so this is the sign for integration and what this is a general formula so if you find want to find out the integration of x to the power n with respect to x right so we are integrating x to the power n with respect to dx this is you need to understand clearly with what with respect to which variable are we integrating so this is the formula so x to the power n plus 1 upon n plus 1 plus c and what is the c exactly here the c is actually a constant and why do we need a constant here is that suppose if you were to differentiate this thing right just just use your differentiation formulas and if you were to differentiate this thing so this differentiation of this constant will be a zero and differentiation of this will be n plus one into x to the power n right and n plus one in numerator will cancel with this n plus one in the denominator and what you'll get is x to the power n so like something quite astonishing 
the differentiation of this right you get this or the integration of this is this so you can see a link between integration of or and differentiation and that is why like often it is called integration is the anti derivative the opposite of differentiation so it is also something you can use to see whether you have applied the formula correctly so if the differentiation is of this is you this then you can say that yes the formula applied was correct of course n is not equal to minus 1 because in this case then denominator will be zero which is not something not defined right and why we are using a constant because like the original function can be anything right so integration when you do integration you are actually going one step be, uh, one step uh, before right so in the before step this constant can be anything 10 20 30 40 you don't really know and that's why to come to make up for this you actually add this constant here because differentiation of whether it is 10 20 30 40 doesn't matter it will always be zero right so differentiation of whole this term will actually give you this term and that is why this is called indefinite integral formula because we are not aware whether this c is 0 10 20 30 40 whatever similarly the integration formula for cos x dx is actually sin x plus c and c is again constant the sin x is this what you can see to cross check is that if you differentiate this you should get this if you differentiate this you will get this right so i hope this was clear and we are calling it indefinite because we are not really defining the limits for x from where to where you want to integrate right and we'll just discuss it in the next lesson what happens when you define the limits for now let's see yeah so uh, there's no point in seeing this we have already discussed it here right so simply what i wanted to mention is that integration is actually the opposite of derivation just keep in mind this right and now let's talk about the definite integral so definite integral is mentioned like this so similarly you will have integration sin x to the power n, n dx but now you will have limits and these limits are actually for the variable with, with respect to which you are integrating right so what it means is that uh, i'll just cover this in example but let's see for now like what exactly is the result of this so again you will get the same result of the integration x to the power n plus 1 upon n plus 1 but now it is within the limits a to b and this is how it is represented and the way you open is that you first put this upper limit into the variable only the variable remember right so this is what you will get minus you put the lower limit into the variable and this is what you will get so this is the result of a definite integral right and why is it important or what exactly are a and b so if you want to find out area under y equal to 2x for x equal to 1 to x equal to 5 right so for x equal to 1 to x equal to 5 you only want to find out this area now this as you can of course yes you have guessed it correctly it will be a simply a plain number right so it will be without any variable in it right because it's a simple plain number of course you can find out the area manually as well but for complex function you won't be able to find out manually and that's why we have integration formulas so what you do is you simply apply the formula for 2x dx so what you'll get is x to the power 1 plus 1 upon 1 plus 1 and this 2 since it is a constant so it will remain outside of this integration so what you get is x square by 2 2 cancels with 2 and what you get is x square now this x square is between the limits 1 and 5 so what you do is put 5 here so what you'll get is 5 square and then minus you put 1 into the variable you get minus 1 square so the answer is 24 and of course you can check it manually you'll get the same answer right so i hope both this concepts were clear both of the inter indefinite integral and the definite integral and now with respect to this example we'll see like why is it really necessary to in study the integration so if like you have a simple example v is your velocity and t is your time so if your velocity was a function of time as like 2t plus 5 so now you need to find out the displacement of particle from t equal to 4 to t equal to 6 second now remember we have discussed before that when you draw a velocity time graph on x y axis then the area under that graph is actually the displacement of the particle right you should remember this concept because it is very important and now you need to learn that whenever you talk about area under the graph the another thing that should quickly click into your mind is that yes that is something related to integration and this is where integration comes into picture right 
what we need to find out is the area under this velocity time graph 40 equal to 4 to t equal to t 6 seconds so what you do is you simply integrate this 2t plus 5 with respect to t right so 2t plus 5 dt since this is in summation so simply integrate them different uh, separately so for 2t you will get the integration as t square for 5 you will get the integration as 5t if you want to verify like whether you have done it correctly you can simply differentiate this with respect to t and you will get the same answer and now just know that we are not using the constant because even if i was to write c here so when i put the upper limit and then i put the lower limit and then i'm subtracting the result so the constant will cancel it out in itself right so that's why there's no need to put the constant here so simply you put six here and then you put four here in place of t you minus it so what you get is this result so this is your answer for displacement for this particle and this is precisely why integration is important concept just like we use differentiate just remember this concept for differentiation is used when you want to go from velocity from when you want to go from position vector to velocity to acceleration and integration you will use when you go want to go from velocity to displacement or when you want to go from acceleration to velocity right because in case of acceleration time graph as well the area underneath will actually give you the change in velocity and so again you will use integration there so i hope this concept was clear if you have further doubts do comment and i'll help my best to resolve them right see ya